This video is going to be about uh, making a spindle stop for the uh, 1228 PM 1228 lathe. And uh, I wanted one a long time because I do a lot of hand tapping and I have to put the, uh, the chuck key thusly in the chuck and then do my tapping. And there's no other way to lock this spindle at this time because it's a belt driven lathe. Uh, so what I came up with, I'll show you in a minute, but first off, I'll, I'll let you see what I thought about first was putting a, some kind of a stock that engaged with this gear because this is the only gear that turns when it's not, when this isn't engaged. And usually you don't have anything engaged when you're doing single capping because it's, it's with a belt driven lathe, it turns very easily. So I couldn't come up with a way that I wouldn't have to open this door to actually engage it. So what I found eventually was a, a, a stop, you get it here. It's a locking stop and I figure I can mount it back here and have it plug right into there thusly, and I can see if it's engaged, and I won't be likely to leave it engaged by accident, and I certainly can't engage it by accident. I also thought of putting a solenoid in there, but with a switch, but that's prone to accidents. You might flip the switch at the wrong time, and that wouldn't be a good thing. So I'm staying away from that. So th this is what we're going to do. We're going to mount that right there and I'll show you that in the video. It was make a shim and it looks like I got to take off probably at least an eighth inch off of this. So that'll line up. So I'm gonna do that in the milling machine. Okay, I've got the shim to thickness and I've clamped it on here and what I'm going to do is transfer the holes so that I can drill the holes. So now I've got the uh, the spot drill and the pilot hole. I'm going to put it in the vise so it doesn't yank it out of my hand. And we'll drill that out to uh, a little over a quarter inch in a clearance hole. this off once but I know all the electronics are in there but I hope they're deep enough so that I can put that on there I'm pretty sure they are they're way down the bottom if I remember correctly there it is plenty of room can see that's the, probably the whole brains of the thing. I probably ought to unplug the machine now. So we can be safe. And I gotta put something in there to protect that when I drill through. So I'm gonna cut a piece of cardboard. What I'm gonna do is put this piece of cardboard in on top of everything. And I was gonna tape it. But my genius video man, Jim, says, why don't you just put a weight on it? So that's what we're doing, we're just putting a weight on it. And after I drill the holes, I can vacuum that out and then pull it out, and it should be good. My normal method for doing this is get it in position. And you notice I have three bolts in it, and I just took one out. I'm going to put this in here in, in the engaged position. Right there. Get it eyeball level. And then I'm going to mark this hole here.
and drill that hole and bolt it on. You have to do this by eye, dead center, hopefully. Gonna mark that hole with the center drill. That's one, two, three, four, five. I gotta go one more. That should be quarter inch. Did any fall inside? Not much. So what I'm gonna do now with that engaged, I'm gonna put one nut on it, get it in perfect position, and then we'll uh, tighten I'm going to tighten that up. Okay, so I put one bolt in there and I got that tight. It seems to work good. So I'm going to take and mark the other th three holes. So now I can use the uh, centering device here. Now I can remove this and drill the other three holes and we should be done. Well, we see if we get the uh, holes in the right place. At least two of them are right. I'm definitely putting a wa lock washer on here because I don't want those nuts dropping down onto that circuit board ever. So we're using lock washers on every one. This is three. That one's good. So everything's in there. I'm gonna do one more vacuum before I pull that cardboard out of there. Everything works as it should, I guess. Put the cover back on. It's that way. It's got a chamfer on the back, I see it. So it has to go in right. Or it doesn't fit. So there it is. Works good. The only thing I have to remember is not to leave it engaged when I turn on the lathe. I'm not sure what would happen if the belt would slip or it would torque in, but uh, I probably should try a test. What would happen if that was engaged and I turned the lathe on? This is kind of scary for me. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but we're going to engage this. And I've tried holding the chuck, and I cannot hold this chuck when the lathe is even on low. So I'm going to take this and... First, I'm going to turn the, turn the speedway down, open the, the box up here, 
And we're going to turn the lathe on. Whoop. You see the motor's spinning, the belt's slipping. Okay, that's good. So now I'm going to turn the, the speed up a little bit and see if anything changes. Just the motor runs fast. So if you happen to screw up, it's not going to destroy anything. No matter where you head it, you're not going to get in trouble with this, even if you forget it. But a good habit is to always, before you start turning something, always give the chuck lay the spin and make sure these are clear and everything is clear in your, uh, your tool bits and so forth because it's just a good practice and I always do this so there's no way I'm going to leave that engaged when I do this every time. So I thank you for watching and if you liked what you saw give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my video. Quite a bit for the, uh, something that I could use for a spindle shop. A spindle stop. A lot of these are made out of sheet metal, but this one is cast iron and it's really solid. So uh, if you look on Amazon, you can find this and it's only around 10 or 12 bucks with the shipping. And uh, I think it's an excellent, excellent improvement for this lathe. Thank you very much for watching.